remember the stories about the oil running out. Well, this week has seen a significant move in the search for alternative renewable energy. Solar power, not picked up here on Earth 93 million miles away, but at a place where it's hotter, up in space. The Americans and the Japanese are already working together on this, but now EADS, the European company that produces Airbus planes, is in the race. Its Munich-based Astrium subsidiary plans a pilot project to put a harvesting satellite in orbit as early as 2015, shooting back the energy by lasers. You put a satellite in orbit, uh, you attach to it large, large numbers of solar collectors, and then you beam the resultant energy down as microwave radiation to the uh, face of the Earth. Uh, that sounds like science fiction. Of course, every technology before it's real is science fiction. But it's actually a very practical uh, approach to the problem. You're watching Agenda with George Friedman. George, the day we're going to see clean, efficient solar energy from space powering our cities seems to be getting closer. We've had a sudden surge of activity. I still think that we are a couple of generations out before this is going to become the primary means of uh, powering society. But I think uh, you have to start small. Some of these investments are $20 billion, so they're not that small. But you have to begin uh, with pilot projects. And I think what we're going to see in the next 15, 20 years are substantial pilot projects with a lot of energy coming in 30 or 40 years, but certainly by the end of the century, this is going to be a major source of energy. But transatlantic competition from the Airbus owner will surely be a spur. I think the um, competition is going to feed on each other. The basic debate is what is going to be the delivery system. Uh, some are looking at microwave radiation, which is the most obvious choice. Uh, the Europeans are looking at laser radiation. And there's yet another option, which is dropping a tether, a cable, from the satellite uh, to the Earth and uh, sending energy down that way. At present, on planet Earth, who gets what heat from the sun depends on where you are. But bolting on large numbers of solar panels on a series of orbiting satellites, creating more clutter in space, may lead to debates on who gets what. Though Dr. Friedman is sanguine that this aspect can be resolved and points to the geopolitical realities. I think the geopolitics of really changes, and what's really driving this from the Japanese, American, and European point of view, is to get away from hydrocarbons. And that's not only because of the issue of global warming, which is in various times controversial, but it has to do with the non-controversial issue that the primary source of hydrocarbons that are exported comes from the Persian Gulf. That's a very troubled area, and none of these three entities want to see uh, their energy dependent on them. The Europeans have another reason. Uh, they don't want to be dependent on the Russians. So everybody has a reason among these three to want to go into space and find their own source of energy. Inevitably, those who go into space and develop the source of energy will also be able to sell it. And that will put them in a tremendously powerful economic position because those countries that can't afford to go into space are going to be buying their energy from these consortia. I'm Marla Dial with a look at the week ahead. After a weekend that was expected to bring protests in Caracas and talks between the South Korean and Indian leaders, attention turns to several big meetings over Afghanistan. In the first of these, the presidents of Turkey, Pakistan, and Afghanistan will be meeting on Monday to discuss their cooperation. Meanwhile, the Russian ambassador to Ukraine will finally be going to Kiev now that pro-Western President Viktor Yuchenko is a lame duck. On Tuesday, Afghanistan still in the spotlight as regional leaders gather in Turkey and President Hamid Karzai meets with German leaders over NATO's strategy in his country. There's also some movement coming in Honduras where military officials face charges related to last year's coup and a new president will be inaugurated. Also on Wednesday, Israeli and European leaders will be in Poland, marking the 65th anniversary of the liberation of Auschwitz and the annual World Economic Forum gets underway in Davos, Switzerland. On Thursday, the biggest conference on Afghanistan begins in London, with the UN Secretary General, the US Secretary of State, Afghanistan's President and the British Prime Minister all attending. Finally, Britain's last Prime Minister, Tony Blair, gives testimony to a commission investigating the country's role in the Iraq War 
and a Nigerian court rules on a lawsuit seeking President Umaru Yaradua's replacement in office. 